Snapple. Eat her up. We uh, just marked a couple good snapper. Guys are gonna drop down. We're gonna get Blair hooked up here. We're gonna try to get Blair hooked up. Nah, Blair's gonna get hooked up. I'm gonna show you what this DOA mullet will do. It's called the swimming mullet. Same stuff I used down catching snook. We're gonna see how it does the snapper here. He's gonna, he's gonna pull one of those Florida tricks on us over here in South Texas. You can see what I'm doing. I'm letting the line out, bounce it a few times, bring it up off the bottom, kind of reel down to it, give it a few more bumps off the bottom, and then open the bale and let it right back down. And I, with, the, with, with what they're using, they're using conventional reels, and they just push the button, drop it back down, click it over and engage the spool, and bring it up. Fish on, brother. Fish on! <clears throat> I knew you could do it, Blair. It's a brand new eight foot one. Right, McGill, that is. Hey, is that a drag out here slipping? <laughs> What's that? Is that a drag run? That's a little bit of drag going. Well, we have to start you off slow, Blair. There's a little color. That looks like a red snapper to me. All right, that's about a, <laughs> about a 10 pound snapper right there. Man, are these things pretty. Let's show you what this guy looks like in the light. I tell you what, you say you're not going to keep them unless they're 10 pounds, right? Yeah, that was probably around six to seven pounds, Blair. Ooh. Is he, we, is he a legal fish? Oh, he's, he's way legal. He's uh, 15 inches illegal. He's probably 23, 24 inches long. Man, are these some pretty fish or what? We'll let him go and grow up. We'll, we'll try to keep them between 10 and 15 pounds. We'll let the big breeders go and keep the, the mid-sized ones. Sounds good. And just chunk them back down in? Yes, sir. Let them go. See you later, buddy. God, he would be one He would be one to keep back home. But here he goes. Back to the deep. Well, welcome to this episode of Addicted Fishing. We got Captain Bobby Schoenfeld here with us today. We're off the Texas coast. We got Jim over here. We got Rick up front, a couple of buddies of Bobby's, and we're gonna be catching some fish today. Y'all stay tuned to this episode of Addicted Fishing. We are gonna be catching red snapper, cobia, whatever bites the hook. We'll be right back. One thing that's pretty wild about these snappers here is usually when you got to go offshore to catch snapper, you have to go way offshore. This is one of the first times in my life I've ever caught snapper this close to the beach. And if you can see back behind us, we're only seven, eight hundred yards off the beach, 35, 40 feet of water. The snapper are going crazy. What we're going to do now, we're going to reposition. The wind keeps blowing us in, reposition us back off the drop off off the ledge. Start bouncing those, and what I'm using, I'm using a DOA swimming mullet, something that we go catch snook on. So I'm just bouncing them right here in this shallow water, and it is producing a few fish. I'm throwing a little chunk of uh, dead bait, a little piece of a hardtail, some leftover leftover baits from one of the kingfish tournaments. Uh, Bobby, you fish a lot of kingfish tournaments, don't you? We fish the FLW Pro, the SKA Pro. We fish about 30 tournaments a year. I know, how, I know how that schedule is, it's rough. It's a rough schedule, you know. When we, when we get home, every once in a while, we get to sneak out here and catch some snapper, ling, and uh, wahoo, stuff like that. But not too often, but it sure is nice when we do get a chance to catch something besides kingfish. Rick's got one. What you got there, Rick? Hope he's bigger than that one I got earlier, because we want some dinner tonight. Oh, I got a good mark right now, guys. Oh, Straight look at that. Down. Good bottom. mark. Good color. Oh, yeah. That one's over 10 pounds, Blair. That's a good snapper. Uh, I think there's some dinner tonight. Thank you, Blair. <laughs> no what do you think, problem. Blair? I think that's a nice snapper. That almost classifies as a Cadillac. All right, Daddy Jim's hooked up now. Uh oh, everybody's getting hooked up. These have got to be one of the best eating snappers there is. Right out of 35 feet. I'm gonna put this one in the box and go bounce some more. <laughs> nice fish. Where's your box at on this boat? Up in the front. So you got some color there? Yeah. Jim's got some color up front here. Another snapper. Think you can lift him, man? Oh, man, these are such pretty fish. That looks like another one for the box, huh? Their bellies are fat. That means they've been feeding. There's a crab migration going on inside the Laguna Madre right now. That's why them redfish are so fat right now. I'm gonna show you these gill plates I'm talking about on these fish. 
to see on this side, but if you see those right there, they are like a razor blade and they will cut you, I mean, that quick. But uh, that's a pretty one. Is that a box fish? Yeah, go ahead and box that one. All right. We'll keep a couple of that size. It'll be real good eating tonight. Go good on a sandwich. <laughs> Double fist in action. Fisting to get him on. Yep, just like that, there you brother. Go, brother. Hello, 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 hello. Got him on the DOA. Gotta love it. <laughs> and this is that this is that seven nine or oh just that one just got hit. On too. <laughs> well who's gonna grab that one? Well so far, DOA has gotten me two fish. Or one and a quarter right now. <laughs> oh, come on. And this is a 7 9 right, McGill. This is the one. Oh, there you go. Oh, look at that. The other one's going off. Somebody grab it. Oh, just busted it. Say, this is a 7 9 model. It's the same model I go out and catch redfish with. Mosquito Lagoon, the championship. Matter of fact, I think this is the same rod I use in the championship. I just put a different reel on it. Some a little bit more power. But this is called getting sporty with them. I would say. <laughs> well, Bobby, I appreciate you inviting me again on this trip. I met Bobby on the FLW tour a couple years ago, and he told me about this spot out here where he comes and just catches red snapper after red snapper after red snapper. He said even sometimes you can get them behind the boat here so thick that the whole water turns red when you start chumming them up. So I just had to come see it. If y'all ever want to do something like this, there's plenty of guides out of Port Aransas that you can go with. They'll take you out of Packery Channel or right there out of Port Aransas. And they can bring you out and they'll put you on these wrecks or put you on a rig. And you can come out here and just bounce these DOAs. You can use live bait. You can use old dead chunk bait. Send them down and get you a red snapper. Catch a 10 and 20 pound snapper on 12, 15, 20 pound test line. It don't get any better than that. Like I was saying, I tell people at the at my seminars and wherever I'm wherever I'm showing these rods off, the power comes right here. It's a carbon Kevlar wrap. Like I say, it's the same rods I'm using. Look, I got a little knot in the line. I think if I did, the power pro would still hold. But uh, same rods I'm using for redfish, trout, snook, tarpon and now snapper. <laughs> Power Pro, he's fishing in this rod. I'm, I'm pretty impressed with this rod he's got. It's a nice rod. Oh, Jim, you got one? Make sure you ain't around uh, Blair up here. I don't think, you got one on? Yeah, but he's coming back pretty good ways this way. Yeah. Jim, Jim, come this way a little bit so we can make sure. I, yeah, he, he's not on me. I think we're clear. He's not on me, I don't feel him. Okay, I think we're clear. Right oh, oh, I got rods going off. Let me have that rod ready. We got we, a triple air here. Are we in gear? Yes, put it in neutral, Rick. Triple header snapper. Triple Texas headers. Texas style, baby. Texas style, brother. You got that right. You know, I think if I'm I wasn't- I one of those, Blair. <laughs> <laughs> I think if I wasn't teaching the class at the IMG Academies, I would have moved here by now. Because I tell you what, this fishing in Texas is, is unbeatable. Especially where we're at. There's no other boats around us. I got I got the, the baby of you. You got the baby, I think, there. The baby, and it's an eight eight pound snapper, and it's the baby. <laughs> well, hold him up there. We got all three of them in the net at the same time. I think I'm about to see this guy. <sighs> oh yeah, look at that sucker. Look at that big old Jack Cravel. Is that what it is? Yeah. Is it really? Giant Jack Cravel. Oh my god. Well, we usually call them our jacks when they're that size. Or a big canal tuna. <laughs> what you got over there, Jim? Well, Jim's got a real one. I'm gonna help him out over on this one. Man, oh man, look at that beautiful fish. Oh, nice one, nice That's one. That's a nice fish. See how he's hooked? That's a fish, brother. There he goes. Man, are these, a, are these the prettiest snapper in the world or what? They are pretty. Way to go, Jim. All right. How about a Texas style high five on that one? Look at that fish, y'all. Look at that fish. 
Got a buddy back home and eat your heart out. Eat your heart out, frog. <laughs> that is a nice one. Mwah. Well, thank you whoever unhooked my little Jack Carvel here. We usually get these off the Space Coast, kind of that size. You say this one's a little one for here? Yeah, we catch some 50, 60 pound Jack Carvels around here. Woo! And these suckers fight. Well, you saw that. That was a nice one. Just toss him back in. You don't want him for bait or anything? No, uh, let him go. Let him go. Let him keep cleaning up the golf. Anywhere you catch a Jack Carvel, they pull. Over in the canals, we call them canal oh, tuna back they're, they're a blast to catch. I mean, they fight like crazy. They sure fight. Well, I'll tell you what. We're gonna go reposition, I think, get back on this hunt where we just got all these fish on. Y'all stay tuned, we'll be right back with some more addictive fishing. Well, we got a couple in the box. How are we gonna cook these things up tonight? All right, fry a few of them up and then we'll do a little, uh, little lemon pepper grill. Doesn't that make your mouth water? <laughs> Anybody that's ever eaten red snapper has got to know what he's talking about. Uh -oh. Strip and drag, baby, strip and drag. You got to love it when they do that, huh? Yes, sir. Texas snapper fishing, buddy. This is your first one of the day, isn't it? Yeah, old Blair's putting it on me, man. I got some catch up to do. There oh, we go. there you go. God, they're so pretty, aren't they? Nice Texas snapper. Got him. That looks like one for the box. Nope, didn't get him. Paying attention to your fish, I'm sitting here getting whacked. Nice red snapper. That looks like a pretty good one, Bobby. You say the limit here is how many now? In state, Texas state waters is four per person. That's why we try to fish state waters if at all possible. Instead of uh, fed waters, they change it to only two snapper per person. Oh, oh, I got one bumping me now. Oh, I think I jerked too soon. That's what she said. Rig It Right by Wright and Miguel. Now y'all pay close attention. It's time for the Rig It Right section today. I'm gonna to show you what I was using. It is the DOA swimming mullet. It's got a nice heavy head on it. Something you can get way down deep underneath those rigs. And how you want to work this DOA swimming mullet is you want to make it look like an injured mullet. And anything that swims around this rig, you know, you bounce it down on the bottom and you bring it up and then down. I had 50 pound test fluorocarbon leader and I always say if you have fluorocarbon leader and it brings you one more bite during the day, definitely use it. Brand new from Wright McGill, it's still in the Signature Series line and you can find this rod anywhere you find the Wright McGill Signature Series and this is the eight footer. That's right, it's an eight foot rod, able to just jig it off the bottom and make this bait look as natural as possible. That's your Rig It Right section for today. Hope y'all can get out here to the Texas coast and catch you some good fish. Rig It Right by Wright and Miguel. Well, what we did, we changed positions a little bit. Had a nice little beanbag ride out here to this rig. And I just dropped down. I was I had a little tangle in my, in my uh, line here, letting a little line out with my DOA. And sure enough, whammo. Fish on! We got us a fish. Fish on, brother! Uh-oh, uh-oh, uh-oh. Man, these fish are strong. They're not as strong as the rod, though. Well, that's definitely the ultimate test. I've never had anything pull on these rods this hard. We all live in a yellow submarine. Yellow submarine. Got that jack kick though. Okay, if that ain't a testament for the new Wright McGill rods, I don't know what is. Yeah, it's Jack, I see him down there. Uh-uh. Uh 
I do have Woo. to say, uh, Blair, I've seen you land three jackfish faster than anybody I've ever seen land. <laughs> it's all in the rods, brother. <sighs> Another Jack Cravel. That'll wear your butt out, I tell you. What is that annoying noise it keeps making anyway, but I know it's, there it goes. Hear, hear it? It's an identification beacon? Basically, yeah, it's a whistle for ships and, and boaters and whatnot, uh, mo mostly for fog and at night. Yeah, well, it's quite annoying. <laughs> yeah, it's annoying, but. But you know what? When you're catching fish like this around it, I'll take that annoying sound all day long. That's right. I'd rather listen to that than not have these platforms here because so much uh, habitat for, for the fish, for breeding and, and fishing around and, and everything else. It's, uh, it's a really good thing we have here in the Gulf. Let's put a different beacon on there. You know, Blair, we're working on a project right now here in the state of Texas that uh, it's going to be a mile wide reefing corridor the entire length of the state of Texas, all in the Texas state waters from seven and a half to eight and a half miles offshore. So that's gonna run what, from Port Mansfield? All the way up to Sabine Pass. It's gonna have uh, over 40,000 reefs in that mile long, mile wide co corridor, the entire length of the Gulf. It's called the Texas Great Barrier Reef Project. What are they gonna make it out of? Uh, it's gonna be concrete rubble. It's gonna be also pyramid style reefs, uh, rope reefs, all types of different reefs that'll be deployed in this uh, corridor. That's pretty awesome. Come on, big snapper. What you got, Blair? I don't know. Could be the man in the yellow suit. It ain't acting like no Jack Gravel. Uh, not yet. They'll fool you. I got the bigger rod out on him this time. Oh. I'm sure jerking a lot, though. Yeah. Could it be a lane? I don't know, but he just realized he was hooked. He's, he's fighting a little bit different. Hey, it is a cubby, it's a cubby. Nice cub. 37 inches, Blair. Him? Get him in the net while we'll measuring. Yeah, I'll measure him out. The cobia, just like you said, right around the rig. Heck, you could have probably just reached down and netted that other one. <laughs> nice little cobia there, Blair. It needs to be a little bit bigger, though. We're gonna have to let that one go. Yeah, that's all right. They're fun to catch. That's right. But that right there is called a cobia, a ling, lemon fish. They got all sorts of names for them. But that, uh, that is the targeted species right there that we came to the rigs to get. Good call, Bobby. Good call. Always like catching cubby, no matter what you call them. Get out of here. Well, Bobby, as you said, I don't think we can do much else. That was an awesome time. Hey, if you ever get a chance to go to the FLW Kingfish weigh-in, go to it. You're going to see this boat. You'll see Bobby there. And hopefully, you see him holding one of them big old checks up from FLW. That's but right. I want to thank you for letting me come out with you. You've been inviting me to come do this. And uh, I'm glad I took him up on the offer. And our other crew in the back, thanks, guys. Appreciate it. it uh, it's been a heck of a day. If y'all ever get a chance to do this, make sure you look up a good guide out of Port Aransas. We're going to see if we can find one and get them on the website where you can come out and catch these red snapper. Covia, those big Jack Carvel, and uh, just get all tired and wore out about like I am right now. Till next week, don't forget about the website, addictofishing.com, and check out the PFA, the Professional Fishing Academy, and uh, come learn how to be a better fisherman down in the uh, IMG Academies in Bradenton. We'll see you next week. Four per person. <laughs> that is a nice one. Wow. But that right there is called a cobia. Well, that's definitely the ultimate test. I've never had anything pull on these rods this hard. I think that swimming mullet has swam its last swum. What do you think? See ya. <laughs>